Hello, welcome to a new video. I'm Amanda and here we are with another paint in by numbers video and do not worry you are not in 2017. I just thought that this would be a good video because I made one a couple of years ago and I get a lot of questions on that video. It is my most viewed video at over 100k so thank you so much for the support. I really love it. Um, but I was contacted by a company who are a startup company called Opal Berry and I looked into them first and I really liked their company so I decided to say yes and they sent me a kit for free to review and share with you guys. Obviously I am not being paid to say any of my opinions on this kit but I really like the quality, it is really nice and I really enjoyed all of the extra benefits. I will talk more about the company within the questions but I do highly suggest, suggest, highly suggest you go down below and check out the links that I have provided about this company and check them out. They're awesome. So let's get into the questions because I actually have a lot and I want to cover them all in this video so that you don't have to go through video to video to video to try and get all of the information that you need. I want to pack this with as much information as possible. So here we go. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I will try to answer as much as possible either in the comments or at another video. One of the most asked questions was how long do the painting by numbers take? To be honest, I've never really timed it, but they do take over 12 hours and sometimes even 30. It depends on the intricacy of the painting. This one that I'm doing now took a long time and I did rush it a little bit because I wanted to get this video out for you guys, but I didn't even record all of this and I had at least six hours of footage and I only recorded maybe two quarters of it. So if you can do maths, you'll figure out how much this took me. It took me a long time. You shouldn't really worry about how long they take. They're supposed to be relaxing and it's not really a race. Just take your time and enjoy the process. Anytime you're feeling stressed or when you feel like you wanna work on it, work on it. And if it takes you a hundred hours, it doesn't matter. Everybody takes <laughs> a different amount of time to complete them. So just make sure that you're enjoying it. And if you're ever feeling stressed, then step away. And also if you uh, are working on it for a long period of time in one sitting, make sure you take regular breaks. I would say every half an hour at least, preferably 10 minutes or 15, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I tend to like to finish things quite quickly, so I didn't take that many breaks, but it does get sore. Your neck, your back, your shoulders, everything gets sore. Even your eyes can get a little bit weird if you spend too much time on it. Like my eyes were shaking sometimes and I couldn't even focus. So make sure you take plenty of breaks and you should be fine. Another question I got was how do I stop the paint from drying out and what do I do if it does and how to do I thin the paint out if it's too thick. So I would say to make sure you close the lids tightly when not in use and add a drop of water or preferably a flow medium like fluid retarder or paint thinner to mix it out and thin the paint. If it's really dried out and you cannot get it to revive itself, then contact the seller and request a replacement. Another question that I got, and I'm just gonna dive right into the questions from here on out instead of saying that, because I know how annoying that can be, is that should I put it on the wooden frame, stretch the canvas over an easel or tape it down before painting? Some good kits, like this Opal Berry kit, comes with it pre-framed, which I really was surprised about because most companies that I have used just uh, cuddle it around a foam board, uh, foam styrofoam roll thing, and that can damage it in shipping. But this one came in really nicely. If you've seen it at the start of the video, you will have seen that it came in a box pre-canvassed already pre-framed, everything like that, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you do have a heavy hand, I would suggest trying to find something that is like a box that's about the same depth as the frame to put underneath it so that you don't push into the canvas too much. I found that I was leaning on the canvas quite a lot and it was sagging a little bit, but I just loosened up my pressure 
so that it didn't happen too much. But a lot of people suggested in the comments that they put it on a foam board so that they can move it around easily rather than sticking it on an easel. So foam boards or easels that have a hard back are good to tape it to. You don't have to stretch your canvas out before you paint on it, but if you want to do that, you can. Do they typically have enough paint in the kits? What do I do if I run out? I've never actually really run out of paint before. I've came close, but not enough to panic. Um, but if it does happen, you can ask for more from the seller. But if you can't wait for a delivery, you could try to match the colours with paint that you have lying around the house. I would just suggest that you make sure you know what kind of kit you have. So if it's an acrylic kit, make sure you use acrylic paint. And if it's an oil kit, make sure that you use oil paint. How often should I wet the brush or should I avoid it? It's really okay to use water to make the application of the paint easier. I have never used mediums or anything, but if you're worried about it, then you can use fluid retarders or another flow medium to thin the paint out. Acrylic paint doesn't really work well with water because acrylic's made of plastic, right? So it can cause it to peel and crack later on, but I've never had any issues with this and I've had my paintings for years and they've never ever cracked and they've been fine. So I wouldn't worry too much about it because in my experience, the paint has been okay. In fact, I've had more experience with the paint being too thin than thick. And if it is too thin, all you need to do is layer it up and make sure that you just keep adding layers until it is the consistency that you want it. If you have an oil kit, I would urge you not to use water at all, but instead use a low odour paint thinner or GAMS Sol. I don't think that, like I've never had experience with oil kits before, so I'm not sure if they give you a paint medium with the kit or if you, or maybe if they give you water soluble oils, I'm not sure. So if anybody could enlighten us in the comments below, that would be great. But yeah, I would not really use water with oils unless they are water soluble. What are the grey sections for? There are sometimes grey sections or white sections with no number. These are to be filled in with the pot that has no number. Usually the colour is dark or white. This is to help with color coverage. So if you have a number that is a light colour, you will probably notice that the number shows through quite a bit and you have to layer it up. I had this problem with quite a few of the paints in this kit. Number 16, because it was pretty much close to white. Number 5 and number 10 were really thin, so I had to layer them quite a lot and uh, I had to use up most of the paint for just covering the numbers but luckily they were numbers that weren't really used that much in the painting so I didn't have any issues with running out of paint or whatever. What brushes do you suggest and where can I get them? Mostly the brushes that come with the paint with the kits are actually really good and they can get the job done. I will say though that this kit came with three brushes that I've never seen before in kits. Usually they come with blue paint brushes but these ones were red and they seemed like they were a little bit more high quality but one of the bristles on the paintbrush were splayed and I didn't use the brushes in this kit because I just prefer to use the brushes that I'm used to because I'm not just a painting by numbers artist. <laughs> I, I do my own custom paintings as well so I have a selection of brushes that I can use and I just try and find whatever one suits. Mostly though I used one brush one or two brushes for this painting and it was actually a liner brush that I got in a pack from Arteza, a pack of 15. I am not sponsored by them or anything like that but I do have a link in the description if you want to check that out and it might be affiliate, I don't know. But um, they're really good brushes and I really like this set of 15 brushes because they're all small. So. They are really good for miniatures if you do those or painting by number kits because painting by numbers usually come with very small intricate areas that you need to fill and having smaller brushes really do help. But smaller brushes and liner brushes that hold a little bit more paint than the smallest one in the kit are usually the way to go. You can get them online obviously or you can get them at Hobbycraft. Well you can't get the Arteza ones at Hobbycraft but you can get 
value pack brushes in a variety of sizes and styles like flat, rounds and angled brushes in places like Hobbycraft and Hobby Lobby and Michaels depending on where you are from but I do suggest really getting those uh, Arteza brushes but if you can't afford those or you don't want them they're not really that expensive to be honest but if you don't want to get those then I would suggest any craft branded brushes will be fine you don't need expensive brushes for these and to be honest I would highly recommend against that because they go through a lot there's a lot of painting involved with these painting by numbers so you don't want to get a brush that you don't want to ruin I can't see the numbers well what can I do this kit actually came with a surprise and it said on the box that there was a gift and I was really wondering what the gift was I wasn't too sure but it makes sense that it was a magnifying glass or a plastic magnifying ruler thing it was like a chicken a chicken a keychain or something like that but I really appreciated the addition of that gift because I found it really helpful. I do wear glasses but I can see 2020 vision with my glasses on but sometimes the numbers are just far too small to see with the naked human eye so it was really nice to have that handy but if your kit does not come with that then I do suggest going to a dollar store or a pound shop to try and find a little novelty magnifying glass or just buy one online they will do you so well also another thing to increase your visibility of these little numbers on this canvas is to use daylight bulbs and you can get craft lamps pretty cheap online as well those are really good i have two of them um i also have studio lights but i have two small craft lamps that I used for a long time to record my videos and to see better while doing art. You could also get a cheap lamp and replace it with a daylight bulb and there's plenty of other options out there for you. There are little like reading lights that you can get. You can even get those like, I don't know, are they glasses or hats or something with a light on it? Just make sure you have a well lit area and uh, you will do fine. My kit requires me to mix colours. How do I do it and what can I use? So the best thing that you can use, which I don't actually use myself, is a bit of glass or a piece of glass. You can get a cheap frame and you can use it to mix the paint on there. Wait until it dries, scrape it off and dispose of it in solid waste because paint is toxic sometimes most of the time so you don't want to be putting that into the water system or anything like that um, so make sure you put it into landfill that's the best way to do it I use a paint palette and I just scrape off the paint and put it in landfill and you could also use paper plates for parties you can get them for really cheap in big packs and those are handy but if you don't want to put into solid waste that much and you want to reduce it then I would suggest a glass, uh, a glass pane because those are the most easy to clean and the most easy to dispose of later on. Um, I would suggest though if you were going to get a piece of glass to make sure that you bought some sort of protectors for the corners because they can get really sharp and you can cut yourself. So usually there's a chart with directions on how to get the colour that you need. For example, if there's a letter H on your canvas, there will be a chart and it will have something like 8 plus 11 equals H. This means that you have to mix equal parts of 8 and 11 together to make H. I recommend to dip your brush into 8 and scoop out a small amount put it on the glass or your palette or whatever, wash your brush and do the same with a living and then mix together. Then obviously do it up until, or repeat the process until you cover the area required. Um, it is a little bit scary because you're like, oh my god, I need to use all this paint to mix and then I need to use it for singular colours as well and I might run out of paint. But like I said, you can just contact a, the seller and get more paint or you can just try and be frugal with it until you've covered most areas and then go mad and cover all the areas with it. <laughs> My lines and numbers are still showing through, how do I cover them? 
So if you're using a paint thinner or a flow medium or water to thin your paints down, use less of it so that the paint is a little bit thicker and enough to cover them. If you feel more comfortable with thinner layers of paint, just keep covering it until they are completely covered. It's really that simple. Just keep covering it until it's covered. Like I said, I had problems with number five and 10 and uh, 16, but I just kept covering it until it was gone. Are there better kits than others or are they all the same? Yes. There are better brands than others. I've actually had bad experience with kits and good ones. So a year ago, I was sent a kit by a company asking for a review, but upon receiving the kit, I discovered that the quality was really bad. The canvas had a weird glossy finish. It came crumpled. There was no brushes. The canvas was weird green color and the numbers were impossible to see. The frame wasn't straight, it was bent and there was no picture or colour chat chart um, and it was a really bad kit and I decided not to review it on my channel because I didn't want to shame the company but I didn't also want to pretend that it was good and tell you to go and buy it yourself. So I just decided to email them and tell them everything that was wrong with their kits and hope that they improved and in the future I might have reviewed them again but I didn't because they didn't contact me after that. But this kit, as you saw, came in a box with a picture, a chart, decent brushes. The canvas came on a straight frame. The numbers are so easy to see but not hard to cover and I'm guessing that it's a decent price. I don't know yet because when I'm recording this, they haven't actually launched their site yet. But at the time of posting, it will have been up for a couple of days. So just obviously go and check to make sure that your prices are what you can afford. The underwater, the underwater addicts kit that I reviewed on my most review, on my most viewed video was really expensive, but also really good quality. I honestly think that the prices that they uh, sold their kits at was decent. The canvas was really luxurious, and the brushes and the paint was really nice too. So, just do your research. Make sure that you watch videos of reviews of painting by numbers kits make sure the people that you're watching is genuine like if they have a lot of reviews of different products that don't really suit their channel then I probably would say that they are fake but if they are a channel like mine where they only do art and they review products and they are not paid to be said then I would say that you could trust them obviously a lot of people do review things with paid uh, advertisements in mind and they do tell the truth but obviously you can be more sure to trust the person if they're not being paid to review. Can I or do I need to use varnish to seal and protect the paint in and can you recommend any varnishes? You don't have to, I would say. I've had paintings that have been sitting there on my wall for years and they haven't really lessened in quality. But if you're really worried about wear and tear, it is a good idea. Or if you're wanting a different finish, finish, for example, acrylic paint is quite glossy. So if you want a less shiny look, then you can use a matte medium or a matte sealant to seal it and to make it look more matte. Um, or vice versa, if, it, if it's a matte paint like most craft paints are, then you can cover it up and make it more glossy if you want. And it also gives it an extra layer of protection if you're really worried about that. I haven't really had much experience with varnishes because I don't really varnish my work, but I have tried Daler Rooney and Windsor Newton and Liquitex and they all work really well. Again, I probably would look up reviews on YouTube of different varnishes and finishes to see what you would prefer. How do I clean my brush? Make sure you clean your brushes with cold to look warm water. It can't be hot. Don't don't wash your brushes with hot, that can really damage the glue. And soap, like a normal bar of soap, or uh, you can buy a brush cleaner if you want, but to be honest, a normal bar of soap would do fine. Um, make sure that you hang the brushes with the bristles down or flat to avoid water going into the little metal bit. I can't remember what it was called. Um, the little metal bit that holds the bristles and the glue together because the glue would loosen and the br bristles will end up falling out. 
If the paint has dried on the brush, soak the brushes overnight in paint thinner and wash the soap with water. Repeat until clean. Wash the soap with water. Wash with soap and water. <laughs> and repeat until clean but make sure that you obviously don't go over is it feral or barrel or something make sure you don't dip it too far into the water container or paint thinner or whatever my canvas came wrinkled how do i get them out you can iron them out i suggest putting a towel over the canvas and iron it that way to avoid burns or ruining your canvas just put it on a low setting and increase until you feel bold enough mm. and that should get all your wrinkles out of the canvas. It is safe to iron. Uh, do you have to prep the canvas before painting? Uh, no, you do not. I have never prepped the canvas. I was going to actually do it in this video. Just do like half the side with gesso on it and half the side normal. Um, it could make the application a little bit easier because you could change the surface of the canvas. It might make it less uh, bumpy to get into the crevices. But to be honest, I never do it. You can if you want. You don't have to. It's up to you, really. You don't have to, but you can. So yeah, those are basically all of the questions that I got. Again, if you have any more, please feel free to comment them down below. I'm sorry if this video was really long. I just really wanted to get all the questions answered. And uh, yeah, make sure you leave a comment, hit like and subscribe if you want more videos like this. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.